Welcome to the RV Podcast. This is episode 481. And this week we talk about RV innovation at the Florida RV Super Show. Hello everybody, I'm Mike Rudlin and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. It's been a crazy seven, eight days for us, hasn't it? Oh, it's been longer than seven or eight. Yes, it has. Escaping a blizzard, driving through torrential rain and wind, and then a whirlwind week at the Florida RV Super Show. This is the first uh, of several reports that we'll be doing uh, over the next uh, couple of uh, weeks on uh, the show. It was a big one. Temp the attendance was down, the, everybody thinks, just slightly from last year. Last year it was about 79,800, and they're guessing maybe around 75. We'll get the final figures uh, uh, this week. But uh, it was a pretty good turnout, I think, despite the cold. Yeah, the cold and the rain. I am just amazed that 75,000 people came. That's awesome. That's wonderful because we had a little bit of sunshine, a lot of clouds, a lot of wind. And it was cool. It, it was, was cool. quite cool. We got drenched um, once. <laughs> the temperature got up. The highest it got was maybe the mid uh, 60s, you know. I don't think it ever hit really 70. Now that sounds warm. But yeah. with the wind, it didn't feel warm. Yeah. It was actually comfortable for us because, you know, we were out moving and shooting video and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So it was pretty good. Hey, I want to remind everybody that uh, this uh, podcast is released in video form on our RV Lifestyle YouTube channel. And just go to uh, youtube.com slash RV Lifestyle and you can uh, check out the podcast in video form. Uh, in audio form, it's available on all of your favorite podcast apps as well as our RVLifestyle.com travel blog slash podcast. Just RVLifestyle.com slash podcast and you'll see um, a player right there and you can listen to it on your computer if you don't have it downloaded in an app. So we're going to talk about innovation in a couple of minutes about the show. And then um, we've had some debate among our RV Lifestyle team about whether we do one big video that shows everything. It would be a pretty long video mm -hmm. because we shot, um, we shot 12 uh, in-depth reviews of uh, different RVs. And I think rather than putting them and burying some in the middle of it, we're going to release them one at a time over the starting really um, tomorrow, which would be January 24th. We'll start releasing one at a time uh, videos of the different uh, units that we saw. And we'll uh, probably have several reports like that. So because uh, sometimes we, you know, with, you know, maybe in uh, Class B's, we might, come, might may do a couple of different brands. Well, we'll see. But we'll... We'll start releasing more of them. Uh, so today is the first one we want to do, and that's going to be in the podcast. It's also a, it's a video, and of course it's a podcast about the innovation we show we saw at the show, um, and we'll get to that in just a second. But I want to tell you um, first of all, this is sort of a, a follow up to what we've been talking about before about this trend in buying RV land. I told you that I had a lead on some property that was going to be sold in Arizona and I want you to know that we have information on it now for you. You know only a handful of places in the United States can you uh, find property that you can buy for your RV, park it there and, uh, and use it as often as you want as long as you want. Uh, and there are even fewer places where you can enjoy temperatures in the 70s in the harshest months of winter. And most of those places, of course, are very expensive and they're very crowded for RV living. The public parks are extremely difficult to get into. Well, we just heard of some new RV properties outside of Phoenix, Arizona, that are going to be sold off on February 3rd and uh, at great prices. Now, these sound amazing. Uh, they are big ranch-sized properties, two to five acres in size. They're designed for privacy, 
with elevated sights and big valley views, driveways, pads, electric, and the best part is they have access to the beautiful Alamo Lake and the Arizona Peace Trail. Prices for this start at $39,900. They have great owner financing. Now, I want to stress, this is ownership, so there's no reservations, no time limits, no crowded parks. You can share it, you can rent it, whatever you want. And I can tell you that uh, Jennifer and I have owned our own RV land. We happen to own it in Tennessee. But the idea is um, something that so many RVers are considering. We absolutely love having our own RV property that we can go to. In fact, we're going to it in just a couple of weeks. Uh, it is a growing trend for RVers uh, who are just fed up with not being able to get campground reservations. And acreage size parcels like this in Arizona are even harder to find. Uh, so if you want more information about this, uh, you can go to bigazland.com, all one word, bigazland.com. The event's coming up quick. Check it out. It's near Phoenix, and um, these are pretty cool parcels. All right. We want to talk now about what you are talking about. Uh, we told you how the show was on our mind, uh, but there's a lot of other people who are out there doing some RVing and they've been talking on social media. Wendy Boyer is our social media guru. She was with us at the Tampa show. And it was great having Wendy help us out. And she kept getting recognized. It was really funny because she's never had that happen to her before. People say, hey, Wendy! And she was so, <laughs> so it was great. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think she really had a good time and she certainly helped us out a lot. Uh, but here's what everybody's been talking about in the social media buzz. Hi, everybody. I'd like to start by telling you about a conversation in our RV lifestyle community. Danny had a problem with his refrigerator food just sliding all over the place. He said it used to fall into that void between the refrigerator shelf and the door so that when you open the door, everything just spilled on the ground. So what was the solution? Pool tubes. He said he cut down the length of the shelf and then he put a slit in it and he just kind of stuck it, snugged it into that uh, shelf there so it kind of created an end and the problem was gone. Well, several people in the community thanked Danny for this tip and they also shared solutions that they found. Uh, we had one solution from Paul. He said that he uses sk no skid rubber mats in their refrigerator, kind of like those ones you find that go under the rugs. He said it works great. And Bud and Sue, they use a tension rod and they shared a picture of how that works to keep the food from slipping out the door when you open it. Lots of good tips there and all very helpful. And also in the community, we had Laura. She said she and her husband are brand new RVers, haven't even taken their first trip yet, and she was wondering about the black tank. She was wondering in particular if they should put water in it before they take it out for their first use. She said she didn't want to be gross, but she was kind of thinking about this, and it just seemed like everything, you know, would stick if there wasn't any water in there. But she wasn't sure if the flush was enough or just, you know, how that worked. Well, lots of people offered her advice and said, you know what, this is a great question. And yes, you want water in there. Water is key. Matthew said there should always be a little bit of water in your black tank. And Ken, he had my favorite answer. He said there are more variations to black tank treatments than basket and robin flavors and everyone has their favorite um, but he also said water's key start with about four or five uh, gallons of water in there before you take your first trip and then of course flush generously so again lots of good information there and then over in our Facebook community, we had a question from Esther, and she said, when towing, is there any reason not to use cruise control? The short answer was, no, go ahead and use it. But of course, there are some things to keep in mind. Ryan said, don't use it on hills. And David said, you know, if it's raining or snowing, heavy wind, heavy traffic, mountains, you know, of course, don't use your cruise control. But overall, many people said, go for it, Esther. And uh, Joseph said he uses it all the time and it helps save on fuel. So that's it for me this week. I'm Wendy Boyer and I'll see you over in the RV Lifestyle community or Facebook group. I'm one of those who uses uh, cruise control when I'm towing. I find it is uh, the best way to keep myself from going too fast. And, uh, well, actually, the best way to keep myself from going too fast 
is sitting what, next listen, to you. Listen to your wife? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so what I really liked this week was talking about the refrigerator. Because if you don't have everything placed just right so that things can't move, it falls out when you open the door. And i got to say, I'd never thought about using the pool noodles or the mat that you put under a floor rug to keep things from sliding all over. I had heard of the tension bars, so I was familiar with that. So it's always fun to hear what other RVers have come up with to solve this problem. This part of the podcast is brought to you by Mobile Must Have. That's a website started by RVers, for RVers, uh, for mobile lifestyle solutions and the products and the services most needed by RVers. Now, we are Mobile Must Have customers ourselves. I could not be happier uh, with anybody else. Uh, they are uh, just amazing. Mobile Must Have uh, installed the ultimate road warrior system on our fifth wheel last summer. And it has given us solid, reliable internet coverage wherever we go. Uh, it is uh, super fast and it is extremely reliable. And they have differing solutions for everyone out there because we all have different needs. You don't need to have the ultimate system. Some of you are weekend campers, some are long-termers, some are full-timers, some of you are, are nomad workers from the road. They have the top rated peplink routers that you need to check out these work accurately reliably and they are sort of the gold standard of routers for mobile internet access uh, they also have a line of the industry's top rated uh, uh, internet uh, antennas uh, cellular antennas uh, cable solutions for starlight satellite data packages that will truly fit every project uh, and if you use the promo code RV Lifestyle 10, you can take 10% off the cost of a purchase. Just go to RVLifestyle.com slash mobile must have, all one word. RVLifestyle.com slash mobile must have to schedule a free call. Consult with them. Uh, see the many different internet options available to you. They love working with RVers. Tell them your needs. They'll come up with a package that will be just perfect. And they also have water filtration systems, surge protectors, RV tire pressure monitoring systems, and much more. Again, the coupon code RV Lifestyle 10, and uh, you'll get a 10% discount. Mobile must have. Uh, you'll find them rvlifestylecom slash mobile must have. All right, time for the interview of the week. And the interview of the week is really a series of things that we found at the show. Um, I think this was one of our most active shows. We've covered, this was the 13th show we've covered, the Tampa mm -hmm. RV show. And I think I, en I enjoyed it immensely. Yep, we had a lot of fun at the show. Uh, I think the biggest fun for us was meeting so many people. It was. It was great. But, you know, let's be really honest about things. When it comes to RVs, there really are not a lot of changes. <laughs> no. I seem particularly this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, they put some new paint on. They changed some floor plans. They spruce up the outside colors. Uh, they add uh, maybe a couple new features. But for the most part, uh, there were few things that made us go, wow. You know, um, there were a few. And we're going to feature three of them uh, in uh, our inter internet or our interview of the week segment here. Um, but only three re things really captured our attention. One of them is a very significant safety innovation that is long overdue. But um, the other two are kind of uh, convenience items that I think uh, meet a, a real need, at least from our experience in the RV industry. So uh, bear with me now. Those of you listening to the audio, you should be able to pick all this up. And of course, the video will show some of these products. And I urge you to go back to our YouTube page, which is um, youtube.com slash RV Lifestyle. And you can actually see what we're talking about. But uh, three items that we found very innovative at the Tampa RV Florida Super Show this year. It's two days before the 2024 RV Super Show in Tampa, Florida, and I'm at a racetrack a couple of miles from the show grounds to attend a hands-on briefing by Lippert, a leading RV parts supplier, and Keystone RV, makers of the Cougar brand fifth wheels and travel trailers. This track has had a special slippery material laid atop the asphalt 
to make sure it is as slippery as ice. And they've brought in tanker trucks to wet it down. They want it slippery to prove how important a safety feature ABS brakes are for towable RVs. Keystone's now making ABS standard on the Cougar line. They join Grand Design and Forest River models in incorporating the Lippert ABS technology. I took three spins around this track to see firsthand what a difference ABS makes. I sat in the passenger seat. Lippert ABS product manager Britton Moffat drove. When you're driving and you have a, let's call it an avoidance situation where you have to steer quickly, and when wheels start to lock up under emergency braking, the system activates to keep the trailer in line with the tow vehicle. That is really the core principle of anti-lock braking system. Knowing that your trailer is going to follow your tow vehicle without any concerns and that boost of confidence that you have on the road, it's going to give a lot of people a peace of mind. I admit I was a bit nervous at first. That's because an emergency stop is probably the most dangerous thing an RVer can do when towing. When you hit the brakes in an emergency, fast situation, if you're at any speed at all, you will have a serious battle to keep the trailer from fishtailing off to one side and pulling the vehicle into a dangerous drift. We were hitting 50 miles an hour as we approached the slippery spot. Moffat slammed down the brakes, and there was no fishtailing. The ABS system maintained traction and control. It tracked perfectly behind the truck, no fishtailing, allowing Moffat to bring it and the trailer safely to a stop. ABS brakes are mandated safety products for passenger vehicles, but not for recreation vehicle trailers. After seeing the difference they make, I think that should change and towable RVs should also be required to have ABS systems. So hats off to Lippert for the technology and to Keystone for making ABS braking standard on the Cougar line. Other trailer manufacturers are expected to be coming aboard soon. Once the show opened, we saw another nifty innovation that we want to share in this podcast. This one, a practical storage solution to one of RVing's most popular bring-alongs, the e-bike. We found it on a Montana fifth wheel. The Montana has always been the uh, uh, top of the line fifth wheel for many RVers uh, from uh, Keystone RV. And this is one that we have to show you. It is the 3623 EB. Now, uh, I gotta tell you what the EB stands for. Uh, it stands for electric bike. Now, a lot of us have electric bikes, a big percentage of us, as a matter of fact. But uh, one of the challenges we have is when we tow them or take them with us on an RV trip, what do we do? Where do we put them? Well, I'm gonna walk around to the back of this place and I'm gonna show you what Keystone and Montana have come up with one of the most innovative solutions to e-bike storage that you'll find anywhere. It's right back here. You store the e-bikes inside a small slide-out on the driver's side rear. It houses an e-bike garage. A sliding mount tilts down with tracks for the e-bike wheels. With one hand, one finger as I tried it myself, you roll your bike on the track and then easily lift it up and into the slide it goes. An electric outlet lets you keep the bikes charged as they ride snug and secure inside that special slide-out e-bike garage. That was the coolest innovation we've seen in a long time. One finger. Actually, a thumb. One thumb. And it's in there, it locks in, automatically locks. It's not gonna shake around, it's not gonna fall apart. Awesome. This is way too cool. Okay, we have one more innovation to tell you about. It's the new Westphalia Class B, making its US debut at this year's show. It is the passenger seat of this van. And it is the seat that turns into a real bed. Now those watching the YouTube version of the podcast can see this, but for the audio only audience, by pulling a latch, the regular seat unfolds and the seat back and the seat itself form a twin bed. 
good to go. Nice thing is, you can hop in, use that little step, hop in here, lay on it, full sideways. I'm 6'1", 210 pounds on a light day. And it folds up as easy as it unfolds. Okay, those are our top three innovations from this year's show. Come back Saturday to our RV Lifestyle YouTube channel for complete reviews of all the RVs that we like the best. multifunctional, versatile as you can. All right, those are the innovative things that we saw. Um, we also saw, and we thought about doing a video on the things we didn't like, but we might put them in, just sneak them in the videos we're releasing over the next few days. But there were a few things we didn't like. Yeah, I think that was something I didn't like, and it's something that a lot of manufacturers are doing now. It's for in the bathroom where you swivel the wall, and so you have a, a dry area instead of having a wet area you can, to the, shower. The, door, the, the wall is like a sink, and then you move it, and then the shower section comes in. Yeah, I felt like I was in a tanning bed. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I just... I, I just was like straight up and down, and I thought, whoa, I don't have room to move my elbows. Like yeah. the old days when I used to go in the tanning bed and shut my eyes so I wouldn't get claustrophobic. Yeah, it, it, uh, I didn't even. I was shooting the video. I didn't even go in with you because I could not have fit in there. There's Actually, no the... possible way. <laughs> it would have been more funny if I had gone in because I would have gotten stuck. But that was one thing. And then how about when you bent, bumped your head in another? Well, that's because I RV. sat in a place that you weren't supposed to sit. Wait a minute. But You're... there was a cushion like above. So. Yeah. Why did they have a cushion sitting there? Uh, yeah, we were actually, and that will show up in one of the videos. Uh, we were actually videoing. Because he just was, happened to capture it, so it's I like. I mean, it's it, like when we were at a restaurant where it was like. Have, a, I thought you were going to have a concussion. That's how hard you bumped your head. I but, really whacked it. Yeah. You know, it's like when we were in a restaurant where they throw the rolls at you. Oh yeah. And I missed, and it hit my head. Yeah. And there was a family sitting, you know, kind of kitty quarter from us, and they're being so polite, not laughing. I mean, you had to laugh. Well, you even laughed when, after you recovered from bumping your head. It's a but, good thing but I, it, I didn't utter profanities or anything. You would have had it on tape. Yeah, but it was like a design flaw, I, I think. It, something I did not like, and I saw this in a lot of the, I don't want to say cheaper, because there aren't very many cheap RVs out there, but uh, they are still in the entry-level RVs or the, the not the high-end luxury ones. Um but still very expensive, you know, pushing 100,000 or more. There are still RVs that they're marketing with like a 1200 watt inverter. I mean, come on, you know, that's just not adequate for most RVers today. 1200 watt inverter. Now, I suppose there are some, you know, maybe uh, maybe just pure boondockers who don't want any power at all or people who don't who are technophobes and they don't like it, but they really do skimp on a lot of stuff. Everything seems to be an extra. Yeah, and I noticed in quite a few RVs that I went into, the quality of the, the drawers and the wood, and they, they were so cheap and so flimsy. I just thought, oh, you get this, you're going to have, you're getting trouble. Yeah, but there were also a lot of really nice mm -hmm. things, and I think overall the quality is up this year. And I'll tell you one company, it happens to be a sponsor, so we're going to go to their commercial right now. This part's sponsored by Keystone RV, we spent a lot of time with the Keystone people at the party. At the party, that's what it was. That's what the RV it show was. It kind of feels like a party. But what I really like about Keystone is they they understand that for people buying an RV, there are so many choices you have to make. I mean, you've got different price points, you've got different floor plans, you've got fifth wheels, you've got towable trailers. How do you know what's right for your family? You've got toy haulers. So they have put together a guide that kind of goes through all of those different options that are out there with their many different brands. You know, Keystone makes Montana and Cougar, Alpine, Arcadia, and Sprinter, all of them with differing floor plans. So they put together a really interesting uh, guide that will help you sort through all the confusion. And it's free. You can get it at KeystoneRV.com. KeystoneRV.com. And uh, also in that guide is that Montana fifth wheel that we just showed you in the innovation report with that bike garage, that e-bike garage. Uh, that model is amazing. Uh, and they uh, were telling me that they did a survey that two-thirds of all of their RV owners either own or want to own uh, an e-bike. And this is the most innovative solution we've seen for bringing an e-bike with you. And that is in that uh, guide as well. 
So check it out. Um, it's a really helpful guide. There's a lot of RV shows coming up across the country. We're in the heart of the show season from now till summer. And uh, you can take that guide with you and you'll, you'll, and when you do your shopping and you'll be able to really uh, shop um, intelligently, knowing some of the things that you like and some of the things you don't. Go check it out. You can get it free. KeystoneRV.com There is a new development coming on the market for RVers in Tennessee. It's built by the same company we bought our land from. We just went to look at it and it is amazing. Mountaintop property, great views, big woods and trails close to the Buffalo River like our property. Gorgeous countryside. It's only a few minutes from the Natchez Trace Parkway and an easy drive to Nashville. These are big properties, five acres and up, and the prices are great. There's even financing. We are really happy with our property. These guys do a great job. It's hard to find acreage where you can have an RV full time, especially in popular destination spots. This is your property, your way. There's electric and high speed fiber optic internet. No more crowded parks or reservations. You can stay as long as you want. Go to RVLands.net. That's RVLands.net. Now it's time for the RV News of the Week, and Mount Rainier has joined a whole bunch of other national parks. This summer, you're going to have to have a timed entry. If you want to come in during the peak times, you're going to have to make a reservation. So make sure you make your reservation. You're going to be out of luck. So those entering... Uh, the, the uh, Paradise Corridor from either the Nisqually entrance uh, the, by the State Route 706 or Stevens Canyon entrance by State Route 102 from May 24th through September 2nd. They're going to need a timed entry reservation. And those entering by the Sunrise Corridor at the White River entrance by State Route 410 from July 3rd until September 2nd are going to need that res reservation so that they can get in. And they say the timed entry reservations make things flow smoother. It costs $2. It's required to enter between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. during the designated months that are the busiest months and the park officials say that the reservation system will better manage crowds, reduce environmental damage and improve a visitor's experience unless you don't have a timed entrance. So what are the parks now that we've been reporting on them one at a time but there's a growing list of them. What are some of the parks that have this timed entrance for 2024? The Rocky Mountain uh, Rocky Glacier, Mountain National Forest. Arches, you know, those are, and I'm sure there's going to, the list is going to grow. So it's Arches, Glacier, Rocky Mountain National Park, and now Mount Rainier. So that's four. And I bet you're right. I bet there will be some others. Uh, I'll tell you one other place where you're going to have an issue. If you have been a stealth camper in St. Petersburg, Florida, you better pack up and move on. A lot of uh, camper vans have been just uh, stealth camping throughout the, the, the area of St. Petersburg. They try to get down near the bay, near Tampa Bay there, and um, people have gotten fed up with it. They keep finding these campers sitting there, people sleeping along the side streets, and they take up um, valuable parking spots. Uh, they're creating other issues. Some people aren't real careful about uh, dumping their their tanks, you know, and uh, the result is it's been a, a big uh, brouhaha with the city council and uh, they found uh, a way to uh, tighten that, their city ordinances up and uh, council members have put a change out that says uh, you can't camp <laughs> overnight on, uh, on city streets. So goodbye stealth camping in St. Pete. Now haven't they limited it to like four hours on side streets? Yeah, I think you can, you know, you can, because there are some legitimate people that come and you park and you walk around and you, you see stuff, but they're talking about overnight camping. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, overnight camping. I can't even imagine that. People would take such advantage of that. Hey, you have an item that is a great bucket list item for this people to consider. This is a bucket item list for you. New Mexico's White Sands National Park is going to offer full moon hikes nine times between March and November. 
So the full moon hike happens just, you know, just as the name implies on full moons. So the National Park is uh, going to have people sign up and they're going to be able to go on these walks. And it's going to be beautiful because the full moon, that light reflecting off the gypsum sand is going to be awesome. So the starting times vary by the date with the first one beginning at 7.30 p.m. on March 25th. And the last one of the year will be at 5 p.m. on November 16th. Wouldn't that be fun? I would like to add that to our bucket list. Yeah, uh, that would that, be fun. That would, and we haven't visited that since it's a right. national park. We saw it once be before they made it a national park. No, it's one and a half to two miles this yeah, walk that's that's not bad not we, bad we can do that we could uh, all right, last story, and uh, this is an unusual story because um, it's not a story about record growth, as we have uh, been reporting in so many other places, and this is in Maine. We keep hearing about record crowds in camping, and uh, in Maine, it was not a record crowd last year. Uh, hmm. Maine officials said bad weather uh, caused a slight decline in visitation to Maine state parks in 2023 both in the day visitors and in campers as well. Uh, between uh, 2022 and 2021, those were record-breaking years, 3.28 million. Um, and state officials uh, say they think this year they'll come back up. They're hoping the weather has improved. Um, which th I bring that up because Maine is such a gorgeous place to camp. We just wrote one of our e-books is on Maine, uh, one of our books, a Travel Guides. Uh, and I'm just surprised that the weather kept people down there. Those down easterners, as they call themselves in Maine, are a pretty rugged group. So uh, anyway, hats off. I still think Maine is one of my favorite places to camp. It uh, is pretty. And uh, weather uh, permitting, um, maybe more people will be out there this year. Probably so. We come back. RV question of the week. So stay with us. We're asked, what's the most important modification we made to our RV? It's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have, and they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. All right, welcome back. It's time now for the RV questions of the week. And I should tell you that we love to get your comments and your questions. And you can reach us through our private email, which is Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. All right, here we go. Our question. How flexible are you when you make your travel plans? For example, we have paid for reservations at a campground tonight, but the weather forecast is for very strong crosswinds. It seems wise to wait a day or so and extend our stay in the park uh, we're in now. We just wondered what you and I do. So they're asking. Okay, um, and that came from Trish. And Trish... Um, Obviously, you made your decision because by the time you sent us the email and we received it and we answer it and you hear it, you will have moved on, I think. Um, but for us personally, we tend to be pretty flexible. Uh, there are times like today, we were camping, we're still in Florida, and we were at uh, one spot uh, down by Gainesville, and we, we really liked it, and we kind of wanted to stay overnight but we had uh, a couple of commitments that we had to do in another part of florida and so we moved on and did it but normally if we have control of our schedule and we had a report of, a, of serious crosswinds we'd wait a day we would consider that uh you know an opportunity to serendipitously take a chill day and just hang around the rv and read or find a new place to hike in the area or go find a place to do a shopping um, we would use uh, the weather and a break for serendipity. Um, you know, maybe you find a restaurant you want to try, 
maybe it's a time you say, okay, let's make this a laundry day so we don't have to do that further off. But trying to uh, build some flexibility in. And I know that's hard when you have a reservation, but you can cancel a reservation. So, you know, if it's really, the, there's nothing worse than riding in terrible weather. And uh, once you're into it and you're getting those winds, man, that, that can be crazy. Uh, so why put yourself through that? Cancel your reservation and you can try and make another one or find a different spot and a different place to make a reservation. Um, that, that's our advice to you. Now, here's the other thing. If you are a member of our RV lifestyle community, our brand new one that we just started at, um, our, at community.rvlifestyle.com, you can send us a chat. Uh, I, we're on there multiple times a day and we might get a question from somebody with a chat. And uh, I, would a I would have answered that right away. And I would have, you know, I probably wouldn't have been as as long in the answer as we are here on the podcast, but I would have said, hey, you know, cancel it. Be safe instead. Um, so if you guys haven't joined our community, please do. It's an alternative to Facebook. Uh, it's much more interactive. It's very friendly. People aren't, um, there's no none of that Facebook drama. Nobody's name calling. People are friendly. I keep emphasizing that. Uh, <laughs> just go to community.rvlifestyle.com. And, you know, sometimes you can't get your money back. You've made a reservation and there's no refund. Bite the bullet. It's better to lose some money than to stress yourself out and drive wind buffeting your rig, whatever you have. It's just not worth the stress. Now, sometimes people like ask us and they, they see us like going to the Tampa show. You know, we had terrible weather. But we didn't have much of a choice because that was, you know, that's our job. This is our work, too. Our, this isn't our retirement. We're, we're working and we had to get down to that show. So we didn't have a lot of choice in that. But had we uh, just if we were just going down there for fun, we probably would have canceled uh, a couple of days anyway and just waited out the bad weather as best we could. Um, so safety's first, but enjoy the serendipity. You, you don't know what cool things you'll find by staying a little longer in a place that uh, you were just going to pass through. All right, send us your questions, Mike and Jen, rvlifestyle.com. We would love to, uh, to answer your questions and feature them right here on the podcast. All right, keep watching our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash rvlifestyle. Why don't you just go and subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> go subscribe to our YouTube channel, RV, uh, YouTube slash RV Lifestyle, youtube.com slash RV Lifestyle. We'd, we'll be doing um, reviews of the RVs we saw at the Tampa RV Show all over the next several days. So check them out. Thanks for watching. Happy trails. Mm -hmm.